Welcome to the another episode of Talk Word. Talk Words, where we'll be talking about comedy and open source. The talk show is all about honoring the people for their contributions to building and nurturing communities that support open source technologies and cybersecurity for better and the safer world. Today we have our special guest, Mr. Santosh Yadav. Santosh has been working in IT industry, specifically in program and application development field, more than twelve plus years. Santosh is a full stack developer and open source community enthusiast. Is also a GD for Angular. GD is Google Developer Expert Program, and also a Auth Zero Ambassador, which is also a common program where uh, I was a part of it. He helps other developer to grow and expand. Santosh is a full stack developer and a very good experience in front end and full stack web development. He has completed twenty plus project, including project like bank like SBI, ICIC. He loves to do coding and helping others. But I, he also loves to tweet about his opinion and specifically uh, about you know uh, everything. I would say everything and love to spend time with his family. If if I miss anything, Santosh, you can feel free to add. But welcome you again to Tacos. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mayul, for the invitation. So uh, really excited to talk to you. Likewise, because uh, I've been following your tweet a long time, and I always, you know, the way you, you know, uh, um, uh, express, I really like that. So I believe people should not be impressive, but they should be expressive. I strongly believe in that, and you are one of the uh, example that you know I uh, like. Even I, whenever I get a chance, even because so many people due to community, they are very common. So I always give your example as well because most of people knows you as well in in community. uh since we part of a couple, couple of uh, common community like you know google developers group and the auth zero program as well but the most uh, the reason i wanted to you know have this podcast specifically i wanted to convey the story of yours because uh, um, you know it should be really inspiring for others as well so i would really want to know when actually you start your you know open source journey or say your community journey and mm-hmm. uh, how did you come to know about like hey There is the open source thing that is actually happening because people just think open source in just as a technology perspective, but there is also a very in in non tech as area as well. There are so many opportunity or area where you can also mm-hmm. explore. I just wanted to know your story. I mean, uh, so first time if uh, if I am not wrong, first time I heard about the open source thing was twenty fourteen. So when I was working in a startup in Mumbai. and one of my friend who is like really amazing developer he is uh, he is in canada now so he was moving to canada and then uh, we were just having some discussions and he said he he told me that oh you are you are really really good developer i think you should contribute to open source i was like what what is open source uh, believe me i had even not my uh, there was not even my github account so i had never been to github.com so i was like what is what is open source i mean probably i might have been searching so Uh, like while searching some issue but i had no account on github.com so uh, yeah i just I, I, i was like okay dude we already have so much work to do so let's not discuss about this i mean who will do it for like uh, for just for fun right i mean open source is all about enjoying and then uh, when i started doing i mean i moved from my entire tech stack changed so i was doing like dot net more which was not open source and then i decided to move into front end so i decided to move into angular because i really loved the technology so it was not like community or something because of course i was not aware of communities so it was like just oh i i like this programming i mean i i, I love love this framework i mean i had done some little bit of javascript uh, not little bit a lot of javascript on jquery and then when i started writing type script is it was like oh this is really nice this is really easy uh, because i was a dot net developer so it was a type script was a typed language so i said okay let's do this so i started like learning type script uh, started like exploring angular and meanwhile i moved to pune so i was i was having a lot of time <laughs> so what i did is i started teaching angular so uh, because after coming from mumbai we i was just having this i was going through this financial situation which i have mentioned in my blogs as well so i was like okay uh, i'm getting some good opportunities to make money so i was like okay let's do it i mean why not i mean if i'm getting money to teach something and somewhere in my mind i had this passion for teaching so i started doing that i, I actually did for more than a year i think more than 2 years and then after some point i realized okay now i got a good job at uh, i was working with i started working with dodger bank so i was like okay now my income is stable now i'm 
I made some money from this open source stuff. Uh, not open source, but uh, sorry, uh, from this teaching stuff which I used to do. So like, okay, but everything was free. I mean, I learned everything for, for free. It was never the scenario for me before, right? Because being a .NET developer, most of the contents which you get uh, was paid. So, I mean, it was not possible to get uh, hands-on or free resources like uh, before, of course, .NET became open source. There were blogs which helped me a lot. So I used to follow John Papa, Dan Valin. I used to follow their work in .NET, Scott Anselman, and then uh, I, I learned from them. I learned from uh, their blogs as well uh, when I was doing .NET because buying something was like, of course, it was not possible for me. So I was like, OK, uh, let's now what I've done is, OK, now my money is settled. So let's contribute to uh, Angular, right? So the question was how? The, of course, everyone gets this question, right? So when we, they think, OK, let's contribute, the question is how? So of course, okay. I also had this question. Though. So I said, OK, what I will do is I had written a few blogs on dot, uh, dot .NET uh, when I moved to Pune, so 2016. So I was like, OK, I can write blogs. but. I went to just just somehow. I mean, I went to this Angular repository, and then I found that okay, there are no, there is no actually Indian developer in top hundred contributors from India. So that was that that was my motivation. I was like, okay, no, there's no one. I mean, I will be the first Indian to actually be there in top hundred contributors. So I was like, okay, that's my goal. So I started looking out like how I can do that. I started finding some meetup groups. Some people told me that okay, you can go to meetup groups and. Uh, probably you can meet more people who um, might be doing that. But unfortunately, I, like in Pune, there were no meetup groups. I mean, there were so many meetup groups, but not related to Angular. So I was like, OK, uh, there was a group. I think uh, there was a, an Angular group, but it was not active that time. So I was like, OK, uh, so how to do it? So um, I, uh, then I got, again, some family issues. So. I stopped it for a while. Then 2019 uh, was the year finally I, uh, in January. In February, actually, I, I uh, did my first PR. So OK, I, I uh, went to a conference and then came home. Uh, and then I was like, OK, I spoke to one of the uh, developer from Angular team. So he was there at the conference. And then I spoke to him and then came home, did my first PR for NGRX. So I was like, OK, now. Uh, once it was merged, I, it, it gave me some confidence. Okay, now I can do it. And then I started doing uh, next month. I did a PR for Angular documentation. So I was like, okay, now it is it is also merged. So that's where I started. And then I uh, started being more active on Twitter. So I figured out okay, there are so many Angular developers I used to learn from are actually on Twitter. So I kept finding people on uh, Facebook as every Indian does, right? So we, we uh, I think somehow we had this tendency that, okay, Twitter never existed for us for a long time. I mean, I had no account like till 2018 and then I created my account. I mean, there's, there's a story. So, I never created my account to post something related to technology. I created it because I want. I uh, I was watching like during uh, 2018. I started watching the the Office. So uh, I love the characters. I mean, so John Gransky and Michael Scott. So I I just created my account just to follow them, and then uh, never used it for six months. And then I 2019 I started like once I started doing open source. Uh, I started being more active, and that's where I realized, OK, there are so many people actually here more active. And then I started interacting more with them. Uh, they were really nice. I mean, so because not many people were doing open source back in 2019, uh, especially in Angular. So uh, I mean, it was like, OK, this guy is doing something. He's doing some work. And then I started, uh, be I became part of a community called indepth.dev. Or uh, they used to run a publication called Angular in Depth, which was uh, pretty popular back then. I mean, still it is. Uh, so many uh, advanced Angular blogs are there. So whenever I have to actually learn something advanced, I go there. Now, of course, we also run our publication, but that was the start. So I became part of indep.dev. I met so many people. I met actually my co-founder last there. I met my friend Serkan and uh, NGRX core team. So they were also active there. Actually, they were the one who invited me to join indep.dev because I was doing some PRs for NGRX. And then they really liked the PR. And they said, OK, why don't you convert this to a blog post? I was like, OK, let's do that. And so I wrote my bus, first blog post for like Angular. 
uh, on NGRX. So that's yeah, that's where it started. So like then I became more active in the community. I think uh, uh, you know if I would be able to recall from this, the most important thing is uh, uh, you have been keep on trying, and that is uh, the one of the co key thing. You know when you part of a community because community actually help you to learn as well. And mm -hmm. I read actually a blog post about you know the your you actually mentioned your whole situation like you know how you got into the financial trouble and then how you actually started you know because you said teaching is something that you really like it and you start that doing it and then how you know rest of the history you know so many people actually read about your blog post I would I would able to you know get a couple of a uh, couple of you know things that actually motivated me a lot that uh, you quite a transition in so many technologies right. You so that I would say you keep on upgrading yourself, like you know, in 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 this sense, which is right now people are very hard to find that, right? So many people are get stuck in the one situation, and 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 what I can say that like you have been uh, keep upgrading yourself. I think that is the key, right? So what motivates you to keep on doing that? That of course you know uh, uh, the the circumstances and the situation is there, but when actually you start doing something that something in your back in your mind that keeps you trying so what is that i'm sure the people who are listening you know they there might be some people who gets you know stuck there and they're not able to upgrade themselves i mean uh i remember when i started like uh during my college right so i was of course i there was a point i was like not enjoying programming and then suddenly we came across uh during my diploma i think there was a professor who who actually taught us java and it was the, uh, of course, of oops concepts. And then he actually explained those concepts really well. Believe me, I was able to clear my C++ uh, practical because I learned Java. So <laughs> that's another story. But I mean, during my final years, I was like, okay, now what to do? So I was like, okay, um, my friends told me that you you are good into programming. So why don't you become a programmer? So why don't you start writing code? I was like, okay, but what? So somehow I... I figured out that .NET is my passion, so I want to write .NET code. But and then I I did Windows development for for a few years, so I was not a web developer at all. So I started with Windows development. So I was like, okay. Um, so initially working for uh, like few companies, small companies, and then uh, there was one clear thing that okay, if I want if I want to grow because. Back in 2009, when I, 2008, when I started, I was like making 5,000 rupees. So one thing was clear that if I have to make more, I have to like upgrade myself. I mean, it's not like, I mean, I can just have the same knowledge and then make more. Probably people might be doing that, but that's another story. But it was, it was clear to me that, okay, I have to keep upgrading myself. So when I moved into another job, uh, I started like learning more. So of course I had no laptops or nothing. So I used to work. I used to like study at the work. So there was a there was a job where there was a job uh, work for three months and then there was no work. So I spoke to my manager. He said, uh, "Look, I mean, this is a good opportunity for you. you. Why don't you just invest this time in learning something new?" I was like, "Okay, that makes sense. I mean, why not?" So then I started learning by myself and then moved on to new job because, of course, I prepared myself on that. Uh, that job and then I got more more money of course in the next job and I, I kept doing that because I realized that I, you have to be always uh, like you have to be always aware of what's coming new if you want to be in the market or if you want to have a good career right so I think I pretty much figured that out earlier and I was not scared to take chances so uh, then after doing some web de uh, Windows development, I got the opportunity to work on web. So my, one of my managers said, uh, "Would you like? We are starting a new project. Would you like to do that? Uh, it's on web." I was like, "Okay, why not? Let's do that." So it was 2012. Ace and that uh, ASP.NET MVC was something which was very trending with like jQuery and all those stuff. So it was a good stack. Uh, jQuery plus uh, ASP.NET MVC where you can like make edge calls and all those things were new. So I was like, okay, let's do it. I mean, so I really, really loved that when I did some of the web development. And then finally uh, around 14, 15, I was like, okay, now what's, I mean, I'm getting bored doing this. So I, I started exploring AngularJS and I did AngularJS for I think one and a half years. 
and then uh, meanwhile uh, meanwhile the angular came in so i was like okay now let's do this so why uh, because angular js i realized that okay they are they're creating a new version for some reason so it was it was pretty much clear from angular team also that they they won't be maintaining the older version anymore and they will move towards the new version so i started investing more time into learning this new angular uh, framework so yeah i mean uh, and i always also used to like tell this to my colleagues as well that okay don't don't just like have knowledge what is needed for work have knowledge which you can also sell outside right i mean if you you're not going to work like in this company for your entire career it's, it's no one does that i mean and at some point you will see you want some growth i mean you want to move out and you have to be aware that what's the market situation what people are asking for and if you don't do that i mean you will you will probably you'll fall behind you'll fall behind probably you'll be stuck at the same same work for a longer time and probably you will not enjoy after some time right so that's that's the that's the thing i mean i, I and i love to actually explore new technologies new uh, things which is happening of course uh, even in angular you don't get enough chance to explore something else because every 6 months you get some new amazing features to try out so <laughs> you have to always be keep learning in, even in angular so yeah i think a uh, self motivation is also one of the most important part that you know, keeps you driving and another important that you mentioned that uh, uh, it's a, ri- a risk actually that whenever anything comes in your way you should always attempt it and i think you that's what you actually did and another uh, you know uh, like i was able to, I was able to, I was able to very relate because uh, when i was working in one of the open source uh, product based companies in pune so mm-hmm. at that time you know, uh, our manager has assigned couple of tasks that every 15 days uh, you have to prepare some topics from the because our product is pure open source and it is made with the 12 plus open source components actually different components yeah so and they have to like you know give a topic to everyone that hey you have to do this and you have to mm-hmm. tell us like how to implement how is use case and everything so and there was a week where it was my turn and i said hey sir actually i didn't get time to you know look that much and he sarcastically but he said a very good thing that uh, i don't generally when you are working you generally don't get a time so there is a concept called beyond 8 hours so you have to give mm-hmm. yourself extra time to learn this thing yeah, right of course Yeah, so i think that moment actually i realized okay it's actually, yeah this true because 8 hours i'm doing because there are so many things which i have to do because that's uh, thing that they are paying me for but yeah. after that 8 hours it is my you know like it's 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 up to me what i want to do because that strikes you that you know learn more and that's i started doing that and uh, you know um, that actually changed a lot and that started after you know similar i had the same situation that i didn't have so much gadgets you know uh, so after 8 hours i used to sit over there and i used to you know watch the videos because i i i i get a bored when i read something i fall asleep um, <laughs> so yeah. so rather i i tried to found so this is one one of the key thing that i also realized that so many people love to read love to watch as well so you think see what do you like the most what are the ways you like to spend or the what are the ways you like to learn and then you can do accordingly right just don't stop exactly. in somewhere and one of the example i would uh, you know from your conversation i said that when you join and you start in the software and web development you didn't have a github account and you now you are a github star right so uh, how did you know because, because from no github account to become a github star i'm so it's been a hell of a journey you might recall sometime maybe you know while having a drinks or something we chilling your friend and going at a conference and think about this so like hey actually it's so long journey but people don't know that so yes i would like to hear from you i mean uh, github star i think uh, so i was contributing to angular of course that time in 2019 and uh, i became gd uh, in 2019 so after that it was around march 2020 they launched this program and uh, i was just I, i mean i never wanted to be even right i mean when i was i had no idea about gde what is gde but of course i had idea about github star program when they launched it because of course when github is doing something that's always has to be big so i saw the uh, they they hand picked some of the stars like before like so they said okay these are like uh, github stars and we will add more and i remember when they launched everything there was no one from india so i just 
tweeted about it that okay i mean uh, you can nominate people uh, i think there are a lot of developers who are doing pretty good and you should nominate people uh, who th you think is uh, who deserve to be there right so and somehow i mean i after some months i mean i got a mail that okay you have been nominated for github star so i was like, really surprised because i mean how how is how did that happen so uh, but yeah somehow people uh, appreciated my work which i was doing for angular uh, and i was putting a lot of effort that time uh, contributing to angular contributing to ngr excited i have my own, some of my own open source project which i used to maintain and as I, as i said right so not many people were doing open source that time uh, back in 2019 and uh, i think that's that's what helped because i was doing it passionately i think that was the thing i mean it was not like i i just wanted to do open source it, it was not like that i was like loving it i still want to like invest more time doing open source but somehow i'm not able to because okay uh, moving to new country and all those things yes. and last year i was mostly doing my course uh, i was recording my course but yeah i mean that's that's what and i was doing the teaching part as well by uh, by that time so i was uh, i had started my podcast uh, i was already writing blogs i was speaking at uh, like of course everything was virtual then but 2020 i remember that there, there was a time for 3 4 months i was like giving a remote talk every week so every week there was at least one talk i was giving at some some remote uh, meetups or conferences so uh, doing all those things community things i think uh, i never felt like i am doing it i mean i was just enjoying it but somehow it paid off i mean github github realized that okay this guy is doing good and then they uh, approached me for this github star so yeah i think uh, uh, the best thing that i would will to tell the people uh, that uh, they think you know sometimes when they see people are recognized you know in terms of you know like github stars uh, or gd or you know some other kind of a recognition they think that they have to do something specific to that but yeah, no exactly. because uh, as, as far as i uh, Uh, i know i know how this program actually works but the reason i wanted to hear from you that would let people know that you are not doing any extraordinary work all you doing is to contributing the open source ecosystem consistently right so that made you you know github star you are not something mm -hmm. because epo open source ecosystem that is that is the actual true value of you know contributing to some project that you really love to you know time about it so uh, that just put us for that but you said that you didn't know about gd program right like when yeah. you so how did you uh, you know know about and then you applied it and then you get into it so the, that's the thing i never applied for it so uh, it i was approached yeah, i was approached so i was doing i was doing all this uh, open source stuff and then i was talking about angular i started my own meetup group at that time in pune it was like i used to get like 10 8 to 10 people i mean of course my first meetup was like there was only one guy Uh, only one person actually who came, but after that, I mean, I kept doing that. I, I did that for a few months before uh, before this uh, COVID thing happened. Uh, I, and then somehow I I got a mail from uh, Siddhant, uh, so who used to be a devrel uh, at Google at that time. So I just uh, not mail, but a LinkedIn message that we are looking for some Google uh, GDs uh, for machine learning. So I was like. Okay, I mean, what is GDE first? So he ex he gave me the link. Okay, this is what GDE is, and then um, I was like, okay, this sounds something which I do, but I don't. I'm not into machine learning. I mean, I'm doing something Angular. I mean, I'm doing all this thing for Angular. So he said, okay. I mean, we also have category for Angular. So I was like, okay, really? So I was like, okay, let's let's uh, do, let's move, uh, let's proceed. So he asked me to submit my profile. I did. I can like. Uh, so that you get an online form basically uh, where you have to submit all the contribution which you have made and then after doing that they said okay uh, we can have an interview and that was a community interview so uh, during that i think by by the time i applied and got shortlisted and then i had my interview there was a one month gap so because i was uh, the person who was uh, like taking my interview he was busy and then i went to sri lanka for a conference where i was giving a talk and then it happened after a month but um, somehow i used to follow him already so uh, and then he also like okay he, i i know you from twitter as well you have been doing good and uh, so we had just discussion around okay what why we, i want to become gd i was like okay i mean 
I think I'm I'm enjoying this part which I'm doing right now, and I think becoming GD will give me a title, so I can um, like I can be approached by more people, and I don't have to prove my knowledge, right? I mean, because Google is calling me an expert. <laughs> so and then yeah, after that interview, I think uh, then yeah, there was a last product interview which happens for GD, and that's it. So actually, as I said, I mean I I had no idea about it, so I was I, I got approached for just. GD for machine learning, but somehow it turned out to be like okay, uh, I, I can apply for Angular. Right, right. So the the key the key thing who I can pick over here is that you know you are not doing something that you are already doing it right, and that's what you know makes you to be part of it. The only thing that add that it gives you know platform or you can say as you said right now Google says that okay you are an expert for the Angular. Yeah. The similar thing also happens, you know, when I was joined the Azure Ambassador program because I was the one of the ten uh, ambassador who joined this program in a very early stage. So where mm -hmm. I was not even aware of it, and then we started knowing about. It. And someone, you know, told me and hey, that you should really part of this program, and they invited me. In the similar, you know, you if you are also uh, in the part of Azure Ambassador program, and now yeah, yeah. they are the education mission specialist. So. You know, they pick up some people that who can also mentor the, but it's not in the so much in action right now. But yes, so uh, it things that actually happens because people often ask me as well that hey, how did you you know get into this community and how? So I said there is no intentions to you know taking this role mm -hmm. or taking the part of this one. The only thing mm -hmm. I, I was saying that I was doing from the day one what I was still doing right now. The only things people. Whatever the opportunity comes in front of me, I'm just I'm starting grabbing it. I'm just attempting it. But the only thing is important that you should do what you're doing it. You should not stop because I see yeah. people like the community because of the motivation and uh, you know a lot lot of other things. So I would say that you know you should you should not if you love something you should not have an expectation because when you expectation something and if you don't get it that hurts like a hell. You, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so because I I had this conversation uh, because whenever I to attend a conference and you know how the post conference works right you used to talk with the people people share about their community stories what happened what didn't work what work well right yeah. so okay. what do you want to say on that because I uh, when people say I said if you want to contribute to open source if you want to join in the community you should not have any expectation and you should not have to spend any extra time if you have a time do yeah. it if you don't take time that's completely fine but when you give a time, then don't ask like what what can I get? What do you want to say on that? I mean, of course, like uh, I mean, this is true that you should not have expectation, but it's also good to have expectation sometime. Let's say, but have some expectation from yourself, not from others. Yes, yes right. I mean that. Okay, I am contributing to this, and then why I am contributing is probably because it will help me somewhere in my career. But don't expect that. Okay, I'll be I'll be a GitHub star next year or a GD next year. I mean, if you're that's your target. Or that's your end goal. I mean, probably you are probably you will lose uh, lose this interest somewhere, right? Because you wanted to become GT, and then you will do it, and then you will realize, oh, this is not boring. Probably, I mean, why should I do this? I mean, I'm not getting anything out of it, right? I mean, uh, because most of people who do it, for, they do it for passion, probably because they 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 enjoy doing it. Because I know most of the GTs who has been doing it from years. I mean, seven seven eight years now. And they are still doing something uh, in the community, right? Because they they love doing it, and uh, th that's that's th th that's the thing, right? I mean, it, sh it should come from within that. Okay, I want to do it. It's not like okay, I would I just oh I want uh, this GitHub star look fancy, so I want to become a GitHub star, so I want to do this. <laughs> so that's that's not motivation, right? I mean, that's just okay. This is this is something which I wanted to, to achieve, and then the problem is if you do start doing something and you don't get there. You will lose the entire motivation to do even anything. Forget about just open source. You will lose motivation to probably, let's say, if you have been writing blogs or if you have been teaching, you will lose motivation in that part as well or in that area as well. You'll say, okay, I'm not, I'm not getting this. I'm not becoming, uh, let's say, GD or I'm not becoming a GitHub star. I've been doing this from this many years. I mean, of course, then you will, you will lose the interest. But have like expectation from yourself that I okay why I want to do this because I'm loving it I mean I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying uh, contributing to the community and I think once you have that kind of expectation you don't have to uh, you don't have to ask anyone that I want to become a GD or I want to become a GitHub star you will be recognized I mean you don't have to go and like uh, run behind these programs I mean there will be a lot of programs you will be become part of
exactly because uh, the the most important thing that you should not you should have expectation for yourself as you rightly said you should not have expectation from someone or from the program because what i've seen right now is now people wants to be part of every community right exactly. every community like you know from G, from like google developers or zero uh, you know mozilla program because i am contributing to mozilla firefox program from last uh, eight years like mm-hmm. that, that's how it really started i am still very i was not been active uh, from last three to four years but still my passion is not been you know lacked somewhere and and because i still when someone calls me i'll go there i'll talk about in the same mm-hmm. passion that i used to be why because i love to spend time and the most important i have only one motto whatever i'm doing i'm i'm, I'm learning something because i uh, one of the most motivation part for me that if i'm teaching someone actually i'm learning first so there is a concept yeah. called learn by teaching so that's a motivation for me and uh, that's keeps me you know keep on digging into more more uh, about the ecosystem and that's what I was learning it but what i want to say like you know, people have a mindset this day is that they want to be part of every community they want to join right just not just being uh, you know for example let's say i'm not uh, i'm a devops engineer by profession and i'm con- in a security some my area so that is the mm-hmm. reason i'm part of or zero ambassador program but there are so many people who you know just come to me and they say hey i want to do be a part of program can you you know what but i i always tell them mm-hmm. i think this is not your area why because uh, you don't have interest to do it i think rather you want to be a part of program where you can contribute your interest area ultimately that give you something in your professional career and that add values right but at the end that is matters not uh, a title or something yeah what do you want to say on that I mean yeah that's what I mean so, so when people uh, reach out to me I mean what should I do I mean I want to become GD and this and that or I want to contribute to an open source project I mean I always suggest them okay look see what you are interested into probably you don't want to become a programmer at all right probably you don't you may want to do something else product management or something but I mean just check what is your passion and do that don't just rush behind something because people, this it's it looks fancy right i mean oh there are people who are, who are gds so let's see how how to become gd and then you realize oh that's that's coding i mean it's not my passion or you uh, people see oh get up start let's see what is this oh open source let's contribute to open source and then they will be okay what uh, but uh, in which which project which i uh, should i contribute to i mean uh, so they they often get lost so because they don't have any any like passion for a specific thing right they even don't know what they want to do <laughs> they are like okay because they just want to do it because people are posting that okay they are github star or they are gds and they uh, they see oh they they have like this many followers i mean you have to see i mean uh, they have been putting a lot of work i mean if you are ready to do or take that effort i mean you will be one for sure you don't yes. have to ask them you don't have to yeah. ask but yeah. realize that what you want to do i mean where uh, even i see like college students they are like oh i am into second year i have not done open source i mean why i mean you are in college enjoy i mean you still have two years to figure out so i mean but I, it's more of a fomo as well i would say that exactly uh, because they they i think uh, peop- i think here people are following people no more that and second is they they get attract are uh, uh, really fast for example i should travel a lot like you know i should travel like to work and the people say you traveled a lot you know how did you do that what are the things that i can do so i can also yeah. travel he said you are you ready to work like you know, after after your five days of work are you ready to spend your weekend or uh, traveling somewhere and uh, you know speaking something which is nothing related to you nothing you know gives you money or anything and you need to yeah. i i still remember i should sleep on the airport as well i should manage my time and of course that taught me so many things like how even manage my schedule my time so that my work should not hamper so i was exactly. doing out of work and i was really interested to doing that that is the only reason you know how I, i was actually how i was doing that but people don't see that no, right no, i see so many people i still have people that you know open source means tech there's so many i think those so many awesome people that i met who are a, from non tech background they are contributing mm. you know on documentation localization yeah. they got opportunity right because people are actually run after the opportunity i also want to mujhe bhi ye chahiye right mm-hmm. but 
what you have to do for that they actually don't know because i uh, taking your example right you are working in one of the uh, i think uh, in germany right and you yeah. and i'm sure this all this experience of course somewhere help you to get this opportunity i'm sure we, uh, i would love to hear about you know how did you got this opportunity and how you found it or of course someone else find you i mean so i was doing consulting before right so before i moved here so i was working with as a consultant for some of the big companies so uh, it was like last year then that uh, i realized that okay i don't want to stay in india anymore i mean uh, i think it makes more sense to move somewhere else so i started looking for jobs and then uh, i um, reached to one of my client and he was also happy to move me to canada but uh, i was like okay uh, i had one of my friend in germany so uh i had already spoken to him that if you have any opportunities in your company just let me know so he reached out i mean we i just asked him again if he has something and then he said yeah i mean i wanted to work with him as well so he said yeah we are hiring so I said, okay let's uh, let's see i mean so we, so we got everything figured out we got we scheduled the interviews and that's it so uh, and then because uh, at that time i also had an i was working with one of uh, my friend in india uh, i was doing consulting for his company as well and he they he also wanted me to like join them uh, but of course I, i had already my plan that i don't want to stay in india and i think i uh, i really like the germany because uh, because of the rules and regulations and everything and uh, you have education free for your kids you have like universal universal health insurance and all those things so i preferred germany anyways so and then my friend was here so i was like okay let's let's speak to him and it worked out so we went through the interviews and then everything worked out i applied for visa i got the visa and yeah that's how i'm here so i mean i would not say that i have to i have to struggle a lot to get a job here in germany yeah. not okay but you, you 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 got it but i think uh, uh, you are by contributing the so many years and the network that you build i think that also build a trust as well what do you think yeah exactly that's that's what worked out for me as well so uh, even for for getting into consulting that's what helped me because i was already gd or already a github star so when i tweeted about it that i i'm looking for some new opportunities i was like okay people reached out to me that oh work with work with us work with us and then I was like, okay, uh, let's let's do some, let's do it. I mean, why not? So that's how I like got into consulting, and the same thing is here, right? So I already knew my network, that where I can reach out for the job. So uh, I I have to just ask people, right? So I knew the correct people who can help me. So I just reached out to them. That's it. I mean, this is what happens once you have proof of work, right? You don't have to prove anything to anyone else. exactly exactly you don't have to prove anything because ultimately the only thing you know uh, i used to do is like uh, whatever i should do i should write so i was very bad in writing at that time and i i, I was find so boring to write it but the only thing uh, one of uh, the community person you know who uh, to whom i met in canada he told me one thing like you should always mention your what next you are doing it for example even mm-hmm. if you write a blog post about your experience don't write about the technical blog post so i the, i i i think here i am good at uh, you know doing technical stuff but i don't want to write a blog post that hey how i how i fix this problem but he said oh, yeah because i i found it very boring i like to fix i like to play with the gadgets but i didn't like to mention okay you put this command or you do this quick settings and you fix it i don't like that but what he said they do what you like it so i really enjoy speaking at the events so i mm-hmm. started drafting my experience like what went well what didn't went well even if i organize any events i started putting that how i organize that event what are the problems that i got and i started uh, giving that links to you know people in my network and tell them hey uh, can mm-hmm. you just read this and share me the feedback and what do you think about it and couple of feedbacks what i gathered and they said you should also mention like what next you are planning and that mm-hmm. strikes me really well okay actually that's right because if you if you are if you don't no even even it's a personal life or that as well is your career perspective if you don't know what next you are going to do that doesn't make sense and i think if if let's say if santosh is reading my article or if i am watching your video and if i like it i'm definitely waiting for your another content right that what yeah. exactly next coming up with and you should always mention uh, in terms of any medium that what next you are going to do and i started putting that across and that you know how you know that everything is actually making making sense and um, uh, now that 
community or the network that somewhere helps not only just me if if anyone also need any help let's say if you relocating and let's say i'm going to us anytime and if i need any help i'm just a, just a message and i'm sure so many people just drop me a message and hey i'm ready to host you or ready to meet over a cup of coffee and have a good discussion so uh, these are also i would say a perks of being joining the community or the open source ecosystem that you also build a very strong network so this yeah. is you can also consider as a perk to the business system and that is the reason you know i enjoyed a lot and and i see you also enjoyed a lot in the system but um tell me one thing santosh bhai that let's say if you are not doing uh, you know this thing let's say you are not a developer or not doing any of your tech related things what do you what would you, you know you do i think that's that's a hard question i have i'm not sure what i would be doing because of course i mean i like moved out of school and then i got into diploma uh, which was somehow i was not aware that what i have to do i mean i was confused for it Till, till I completed my entire degree, that what I want to do next. I mean, what I will be doing, like after getting this degree. Okay. So I had I had no idea about it. So I I, I was uh, even in school. I just just uh, enjoyed playing sports, but I don't think so. I mean, I could have pursued as it as a career because I was not at that situation as well, right? I mean, uh, you need money for that. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I. Uh... i'm sure like if if you were not fully a you know coder or something i'm sure you would be a full time professor <laughs> when you teaching kids about or uh, you know a university campus or somewhere because uh, i've seen uh, so many of your videos and the way you explained it i think uh, that's uh, 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 that makes me very connected you know with with your content i always if anyone wants to do angular i always refer your channel i am sending okay this is the thing that you should really follow and the people who are really want to learn about angular and of course if we have any doubts about something i think uh, santosh is the perfect guy to you know, go for and uh, for any technical related contents and uh, and he, and he is very active i i say like you are one of the uh, the people you know if i if i open my twitter i i'm sure i'm going to see your tweet for sure <laughs> I, i mean i'm i'm over active so <laughs> so I, But, i mean i took a break for a month and that was really good acha okay but what do you think you know when uh, when people are sharing uh, their feedback or be, and i see you very open about uh, when you sharing any incident or any conversation that you had or any uh, if, if you stuck in something and you got some you very open to share the experience do you think you know those kind of openness that is also helpful i mean uh, so uh, believe me i uh, i have i have I was not this open before, so because when I was when I even uh, wrote my story, I had never wanted to share this with anyone because uh, no one was aware of it. Most of my colleagues were like, "Okay, he's doing, he's like struggling, but he's probably is doing okay," and most of them were not aware of that what what's going on is like because I, I never showed that uh, at my work, so I used to like keep that separate. So when I wrote it, I mean, I realized that okay, a lot of people co- like really connected with the story because they were like, okay, there was some part of it that I we could connect because we have been there, and I realized that okay, I mean, uh, sharing my story helped others. I mean, then I I met few pe- more people. I mean, in person as well as online, they were like, okay, uh, your help, uh, your story helped me uh, when I was going through tough time because I could really relate that okay, everything happens for a good reason. because your story gives me that motivation that okay uh, probably this is the bad time but i think there will be a good time as well then i realized that okay i think i should be uh, should be sharing what is happening uh, with me uh, with, uh, with my life right so when i moved to germany of course this year as well it was a, it was a really really tough time mm-hmm. so when i was going through it i mean i had no plan to write about it because it was i had to be really careful that i should not offend my previous employer because that they are the reason i am in germany so i i thought I gave a lot of thought before writing this so i just but i try to tell my story in in in, in from the perspective of a, like father and husband right not from an employee uh, point of view who is struggling totally so if i if i had posted that story from a employee point of view that i i came to germany and then i struggled this job sucked or that i mean probably might gi- might have given a different like different point of view for to everyone that okay everyone. moving to a new country is bad or probably that employer was bad 
but it was not that right i mean i just wanted to share from my point of view what is going on in my life and how i i was able to like um, fix everything not fix everything but how i i was able to survive for let's say another year another year and i think that's that's something which i realized that that's important not the like okay whatever is happening is it's another point another story but putting it from a right perspective is important uh, so people could really connect and then they think that okay this is something which probably i am going through and yeah. i should i should probably maybe take it as an inspiration don't follow what i am doing right i mean if i uh, i would say if uh, i was like very good at taking uh, decisions probably i would have never been into that situation right so don't follow what i did just just take it as an inspiration that again life moves on and you have to fight you don't you cannot give up totally totally uh, because uh, as you said ki uh, if this might happen with someone because not every not this could not be a complete story of everyone but chunk of the parts might people related to it and uh, because not everyone is you know, that much open to share about it and you rightly said you should always be caution that you know what to share how to share in in it what which way you are sharing because that is most important part it should not reflect because social media people are influencing really fast right mm-hmm. and they get motivated i always say don't motivated by people you yeah. should take inspiration from that because motivation is actually very temporary let's say if i'm delivering mm-hmm. a talk and you get motivated then it's a temporary but if you inspired i think that you know takes you long exactly. right so i think yeah. um, and you and that's what even i used to do i used to write a very summarized point which is uh, which is in a very crisp and which is from my point of view and similar thing also happens you know as you said ki whenever you do any contribution you should do it for yourself you should have you should have experience for yourself so whenever you do something write something talk something record something do it you know in and present it in your pers- as as your perspective because that as because it's a common right and that could be happen mm-hmm. with everyone so let's say mm-hmm. whenever you record your first video might the chance that you record multiple times and it get failed might chance you know that uh, something is not clear so pe- what people does is they try to you know come up with a very clean version you know and that very productive i think you should not also uh, if if you have done any mistake you should also accept that mistake in a public I I did one mistake. I used to put that that I I um, there was an incident when I recorded my first video. There was a, some uh, you know glitches or there was a, some you know spelling mistakes in my videos. People like hey, uh-huh. should correct this. You can so uh, I said okay, uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. I said you can do one thing. You can delete that one, change it, and you no. I'm not. I said I'm not going to mm-hmm. delete that one. Why? Because that's going to say that I done that mistake. And when I'm yeah, going exactly. to upload my next video i am going to be correcting my mistakes right uh, okay. so that that i did mistake i corrected it if i want to delete that which means i am hiding my mistakes i don't want to do that exactly. yeah and that what i also learned from you know over this year with with uh, with community only you know by by chatting with a lot of folks around whenever i used to go to any meet up because that is always special because everyone has a different way of you know executing the work no and not everyone is safe right so that exactly. is a yeah so that's what i want to start to people that you should do what you love and because that makes what you know whatever you do you actually loving it right yeah. so uh, i would like to ask you a very uh, the last question i should have had a lot of things to ask but maybe you know this not be enough but uh, this is going to be last question but yeah of course you have to promise me that you are going to record one more podcast with me soon so okay. that you know we have uh, another epic conversation So uh, let's say if you want to give any three advice to anyone who wants to start that, you know, open source journey, like what are the three advice that you want to you, you can give to anyone? Oh, it's a that's a difficult <laughs> difficult question. So three advices to start with open source. Yes. I think uh, the first question is take your time. Uh, first advice is take your time. So don't rush for it because people around you are doing it. Don't have that FOMO, right? I mean, um, that's that's the first thing. then uh, see what you want to do really i mean where in which area you want to grow for example if you want to do devops you want to do front end no just don't do let's say angular or react because people are t- talking about it and then uh, you think okay i mean uh, uh, let's do this i mean i would say try things and then decide so let's say 
you started doing some some of the devops you started playing with github actions and everything and then you realized oh this is my passion i mean i want to do this so of course in open source uh, I, I, this is the third point right so in open source, there is place for everyone so don't think that okay i have to just write code i mean it's not i mean you can do a lot of things apart from writing code so open source is not just about writing code you can of course if you love about love doing devops you can open so uh, help someone doing some devops thing if you love documentation if you are good at writing you can just help them by uh, writing their documentation talking about them write blog post create some contents if you are really good at creating videos talk about their their open source project and uh, like create videos create like learning resources around them that's also uh, doing open source so it's not like always about coding so i think this three exactly exactly said that open source actually is beyond i seen a lot of profile who has like open source consultant who actually doesn't have a strong tech background but they know the open source ecosystem how the open exactly. source governance actually is working there is actually whole governance actually the way actually any open source project should be executed right yeah. there is a team who actually maintaining the projects right the you know the way you know that actually uh, you can also be uh, one of the you know the member of the you can say the, the founding project member possible because everyone has a because oh, that's a beauty of open source you can execute in your own way you can make the you know the principles out of it and people start getting on board and that's where you can also build your network so yes and i totally you know uh, be with so who are listening to this one follow that three advice and i would hard, i would heavily recommend him to follow the uh, you know uh, santosh because uh, he is doing pretty amazing work in his field and that's a love you know love about him so do, don't forget to you know follow him and uh, thanks everyone for you know watching this podcast and i'll be coming up with i know i had a small break before but um, soon you know from the coming year that is something i'm going to taking forward that you will see some of the very exciting talks and i am going to i'm going to come with santosh very soon with some another round of tech talks that is also inspired from him that you know tech talks with santosh so <laughs> But so I was, I was very, you know, uh, that, that how what I'm going to choose my podcast. So I said tech talks with uh, Mehul because at that uh-huh. actually I heard from you that I, I I seen you posting on LinkedIn about you know your episodes and your YouTube. Uh-huh. I said yeah. Then I said no, that should be a story behind because there be a story behind tech talk with Santosh. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to be a you know convey story that what is the story of mine and so my story is that I just wanted to share the all all the awesome stories which all these. folks are doing who doesn't have the very great background but they all they did sheer passion of open source and uh, best you know uh, thanks to the whenever they are available they do it so no nothing they never cried for time management or anything just whenever they get time they're doing it so i'm sure you can also do that so um, just keep doing good work that what you are doing it and i'll see you on the another episode thank you again for watching it